Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always, told out of voice radio. So today, we are doing another history video, ladies and gentlemen. We are looking at the top 10 cards from the Platinum Arceus set with one huge caveat. And that is that this is a set that introduced all the Arceus cards. And it's weird because they made their own deck, they didn't really go into anything else. So what I've decided to do, I did a video about the Arceus deck. I'll pop a link to that one in the description. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the top 10 non-Arceus cards in Arceus. Which I know sounds a little bit weird, but it's the only real way to go about doing it. So ladies and gentlemen, that's what I've had to decide to do. Otherwise, it's just really awkward where to actually put them. So I figured, eh, let's not bother putting them anywhere. Now, it wasn't an amazing set, but there are 10 cards that I think do stand out as particularly good. Let's start off at number 10 with the Pokemon Tool card, Lucky Egg. Now, Lucky Egg did see a little bit of play here and there. It was a Pokemon Tool. You attach it to a Pokemon, and if that Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, so not poison or an ability, etc., then you get to draw until you've got seven cards in your hand. Think of it kind of like like Tropical Beach, but on a KO rather than at the end of your turn. This was not an amazing card. It did not see a huge amount of play, but it popped up every now and then in decks. It was fun for consistency, and if you had the space and didn't need other Pokemon tools, it was worth a bit of a punt. In at number 9, a card that saw a fair bit of play as a bit of a rogue deck, Tangrowth Level X. And this was actually quite a good card. It had the poker power Healing Growth. Once during your turn, you may flip a coin if heads remove four damage counters from one of your Pokemon. It was quite a nice tech card for just grass decks as a whole. Now, Level X basically meant that when you were in the active, you could evolve into a Level X but only in the active. So later on, there was the Unleashed Torterra, and that saw a little bit of play as a big, bulky, tanky deck. In decks like that, Torterra Level X was all right as a bit of a healing card. One grass energy, big growth, search your discard pile for as many grass energy as you like, and attach them to your Pokemon in any way that you like. Really nice energy acceleration. The reality is that as a essentially a stage two being a level X, it was just a little bit too slow, a little bit too clunky, but it saw play here and there as a nice little rogue deck. In at number 8, Beginning Door. Now, I said I don't really know what to do about the Arceus cards, so I've left them out, but Beginning Door I am putting on the list. Search your deck for an Arceus, show it to your opponent, and put it into your hand. If you were playing an Arceus deck, you would have to play for Beginning Door. It was that good. As I said, there's way too many Arceus to really try and put them in a top 10 list. I figure they work in their own video. But Beginning Door as a tool for anyone playing Arceus was great. It's kind of like Plasma Ball if you're playing Plasma Pokemon. We don't have Universal Pokemon Search. But because Beginning Door, well, other than Master Ball, which is an ace spec, because Beginning Door allowed you to search for any Arceus whatsoever with no downside, because Arceus was played as its own deck, this was really good. And along those lines, in at number 7, Ultimate Zone. It basically was a permanent energy switch between your Arceus cards. During each player's turn, the player may move an energy card attached to one of his or her benched Pokemon, to his or her active Arceus as often as he or she likes. So you could only move it to your active Arceus, but you could move it from anybody. Now, this was quite good in terms of trying to give you the tools to make Arceus work in non-Arceus decks, but I'll be perfectly honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, this was very much an Arceus staple. And if you're playing the Arceus deck, it was utterly amazing. And that ends the Arceus portion of this Arceus video. In at number six, Charizard. We don't often see Charizards seeing a lot of play. We don't often see them being great cards. This is one of the exceptions, ladies and gentlemen, where Charizard was just a flat-out playable card. A good, solid 
card. A really nice card. Now, it wasn't amazing by any stretch of the imagination, but it did what it needed to do. It saw quite a bit of play. Each of Charizard's attacks do 10 more damage for each fire Pokemon on your bench. One energy, 30 damage, but you could build it up. Free energy, 80 damage, and discard one, but again, you could build it up. And this was primarily played with the Roast Reveal Nine Tails. This gave it a little bit of extra speed and consistency. It meant that you could discard a fire energy from your hand, and then it would just allow you to draw yourself free extra cards. And it had spec spectacular artwork at least the heart gold soul silver one it saw quite a bit of play people did have a play with this deck it was never amazing because it revolved around a stage one and a stage two but it was pretty good nonetheless now moving into the top five we do have some legit great cards but i think number five is a clear number five it's rapidash Rapidash was a stage 1 with the Pokebody Wild Guard. Prevent all effects of attacks, including damage, done to Rapidash by your opponent's Pokemon SP. Things like Luxray, Garchomp, etc. SP was huge at the time. So Rapidash being immune to these made a lot of sense. It made a really good tech Pokemon that did see quite a lot of play. The issue, of course was that a lot of these SP decks would also play Dialga G level X. That meant that each Pokemon cannot use any Pokebodies, which means as soon as Dialga G comes out, Rapidash doesn't actually get the Pokebody, which is a bit upsetting. If you flipped ahead on Rising Lunge, then you would actually do enough damage to KO Dialga G with weakness. Good card, but because of Dialga G, it was never as good as it could have been. But the top four all saw a lot of play. These were all really good, widely played cards. And we'll start off with Gengar Level X. Now, I talked about this card recently in my top five Gengar cards. Special video we did for Halloween. And please go back and have a look at that one if you so wish. Check it out. But it had the Poker Power leveled out. You can choose one of your opponent's Pokemon Level X and put it into his or her deck. Just the level X, they kept the rest of it. But remember what I said, that level Xs could only be level Xed when they were in the active. Which means that if you shuffled the level X into your opponent's deck, not only did they have to search that level X back again, but they had to get the Pokemon in the active and evolve it. One of the main, most annoying uses for this was Uxie level X, where everyone played Uxie for the ability, or Pokebody Poker Power, as it was back then, and then they would want to level X it to get the Poker Power of Uxie level X. It was a pain to get it in the active and then out of the active, shuffling it in was super annoying. But it also had the attack Compound Pain. For two Psychic and a Colorless, 30 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. And this worked really nicely with our number three card, the Gengar from Arceus. Because you see, the Gengar had a really nice Poker Power, Curse, that allowed you to move a damage counter from one of your opponent's Pokemon to another of your opponent's Pokemon. And then, of course, more Pokemon have damage counters. Compound Pain is better. And then it had the attack two Psychic and a Colorless Shadow Skip. 60 damage, 10 damage to one of your opponents benched. And you can switch, although you don't have to. And then, of course, because you do 10 to the bench, then you can hit it with Compound Pain later. And the combination of hitting the bench for 10 and then using Curse meant that Compound Pain did quite a lot. One and two were amazing. And even though the bottom of this list is a little bit lackluster, the top two cards were full-on proper job staples, starting off at number two with Expert Bout. Expert Bout was a phenomenal risk-reward card. It said that it was a Pokemon tool, and you did an extra 20 damage, good, and you gain an extra 20 HP, good. 
but you give up an extra prize card when it's KO'd. It basically turns you into an EX or a GX Pokemon. I played it in my Don Fan deck so I could hit the numbers and KO stuff like Gengar. This saw a lot of play in a lot of decks. Something like a Gyarados that would generally only hit 90 damage with free Magic Arp in the discard needed Expert Bout to be able to get a one-hit KO on something like a Luxray or a Garchomp. It was that good, ladies and gentlemen. It was phenomenal. But it wasn't the best card in the set. The best card in the set was, quite frankly, one of the best cards we've maybe ever had. And I don't say that lightly. It's Spiritomb. Spiritomb was utterly beyond comprehension phenomenal. The poker body said that as long as it's in the active, neither player can play trainer cards from his or her hand. That was when trainer meant item. And so what you would do is you'd leave Spiritomb in the active while you evolved up to a vile plume, and your opponent would have no trainer's items for the entire game. Neither player would but you'd build your deck to last without them and your opponent wouldn't. As if that wasn't good enough, and that was, for zero energy, that's right, for nothing, search your deck for a card that evolves from one of your Pokemon and put it onto that Pokemon. You just evolve from the deck, like the Ansi does for a coloured energy, meaning it's only good in fairy decks. Spiritomb did... Not only in any deck, colourless energy would have been great, this did it for zero energy. This card was phenomenal, ladies and gentlemen, an easy number one. I think one and two are very easy Spiritomb and Expert Bout. I think the Gengars are great. The other cards in this list saw a bit of play here and there. This was a very top-heavy set, and not a particularly expensive set. But I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, the cards that made it to the top were phenomenal and of course you had all the Arceus cards that really are their own deck so they've been split into their own video go and check that one out as always ladies and gentlemen I want to hear from you in the comment section what do you think about this set were you playing back then are there any of these cards Spiritomb wink wink that you would like to see coming back in today's format go nuts be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. There's going to be a live stream today, 8 p.m. UK time. Come and join in. It will be fun. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, etc. And there is going to be a bonus podcast this coming weekend, so go nuts. And no pressure, but we are one person away from having weekly bonus podcasts just putting it out there go and check out patreon.com slash ptcg radio but by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time thank you very much for watching my name is ross and you've been watching ptcg radio